right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. My presentation pulls up. Um, there we go. So wait just a minute or two, or do you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hello, everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started. Wilda, I'm actually going to share my screen real quick and it's going okay. to pull off of yours. Okay. Thank you for joining us this evening um, for our virtual college exploration night. I am a volunteer with OACAC and StriveScan, so thank you very much for being here. Just wanted to share a little bit of information. Please use the Q&A button to type your questions to the presenter at any time. You're welcome to do that at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off. You're muted, your video is off, so the panelists cannot hear you. Please feel free to sign up for more sessions. OACAC.org has a list of more sessions that you can can sign up for, please feel free to. Recordings will be available within the week at oacac.org. So I will turn this back over to Wilda Connect from Hanover College. So perfect, Wilda. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go ahead and mute and stop my video. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Wilda. I'm an admission counselor with Hanover College. I'm actually a Hanover alum as well. So I graduated in the class of 2017. Um, if you have your phone handy or you can take a screenshot on your device, feel free to copy my contact information. Um, I oversee the Ohio Territory. So if you have any questions um, that we don't get answered tonight, then feel free to uh, send me a message or give me a call. So a little bit about Hanover. We are a small private liberal arts college. We're located in Southern Indiana um, near the Ohio River. We're kind of about 45 minutes from Louisville and about two hours from Cincinnati. Um, we sit on 650 beautiful acres of natural reserve. So our campus only takes up about 100 of those acres in total. And then the rest of it is filled with forests and hiking trails. So we'll talk a little bit more about what students do on campus um, to enjoy our green space. As I mentioned, we're a small um, college. We have about 1,071 students. There are a few benefits about being in a small class size. Um, the first is our professors really know our students as students. Um, and then as humans. So they get to know them a little bit more personally. You're not a number in the classroom. Uh, typically we see a class size of about 17. So there's some pretty good connection to your professors who are at the top of their field. We also are a private uh, liberal arts school. Private doesn't necessarily mean more expensive. It does mean that we have a little bit more freedom to allocate our grant money and endowment money. So um, actually there's a scholarship I'll talk about uh, later on in the presentation, but uh, because of this ability to allocate our money differently, um, we have a scholarship specifically for our students from Ohio. And then lastly, we are very established. Uh, Hanover is actually the very first private college in Indiana. We were founded by a Presbyterian abolitionist right before the Civil War. And we were you know, right alongside that Ohio River. Um, because of this, Madison, which is a local city right next to campus, um, was a key spot on the Underground Railroad, and we served as a main link from the south to the north during this time. Um, so just the ease of having campus right here and that history, um, as you'll tell by some of the buildings, we definitely are proud of our heritage. So Hanover's main focus and what most students are interested in is what are you going to study? We do have quite a few academics, but we maintain our three pillars with academics. The first is integrative learning. 
So this is where the idea of a liberal arts degree stems from. Integrative learning is basically saying we're going to take multiple disciplines, so theology, sociology, natural sciences, mathematics, English, art, music, all of these different disciplines, and we're going to integrate them into whatever your concentrated discipline is. So the best example I have is um, a lot of our pre-med st students, which is one of our popular studies on campus, they are not looking to write novels in their future. So they think, why do I have to take um, a literature-based course? And we actually have writing courses that are designed to help them learn how to write scientifically, how to write in a, a medical journal, how to analyze medical journals, things like that. So you're getting the writing aspect of the discipline, but you're able to cater it towards your uh, degree. So you're able to pull more disciplines into your studies. Our second pillar for our academics is our experiential opportunities. This is truly our motto, learn by doing. We have internships and externships that students start within their first year, actually. Um, not mandatory, of course, but we also have some incredible lab um, opportunities on campus for our engineering students. We have state-of-the-art labs that actually have their own dedicated building. Uh, for our health and science students, we have um, a full human cadaver lab, which actually got a complete renovation uh, through a grant this summer, as well as our two patient simulator robots, which is really unique. Um, and then we do have quite a few students in a variety of different disciplines that actually have publishing opportunities and that complete uh, a research project alongside a faculty member. So at the undergraduate level, students are seeing published in whether it be scientific journals or I know psychology is very popular that our students get published in a psychology journal. So you see some students that are competing with graduate level students in their publications. Um, so, you know, for four or so years beyond their time. And then all of this leads to the career readiness that our students see. We have a career center um, where our director is dedicated to finding internship and externship opportunities for students. We do see about 95% of our students take place um, in either a lab opportunity or one of these internships, externships, many of which are paid and often lead to their jobs afterwards. So a little bit about what the classroom looks like in Hanover. Um, I mentioned we typically have a class size of 17. Our professors really don't like that to go much longer or much larger. Um, I once had a professor, there were 21 students and she walked in and said, nope, by tomorrow we'll have two sessions and surely we did. They want that, um, you know, open discussion class base. Um, opportunity for those students. That's how they grow as uh, professors and educators and also how you grow as new uh, professionals in that field. We see about a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which means that students are able to be paired up with a faculty that has a terminal degree, meaning they have the highest degree in their field, and even more so to some of the, the specifications that can come within a degree. For example, um, in our psychology department, we have the benefit of having somebody who has a specialty degree in neuroscience psychology. And so they actually house some of the neuroscience courses and, and advise all of those students interested in that specific category of the, the larger major. We do have a unique academic calendar. Uh, we call it a 441 calendar. This means that in the fall term, we have four classes the fall term typically runs from September to December. And then in the winter term, we have four classes, which runs January to April. And then we have something called a spring term, or as we like to call it a May term, where you have one class in the one month of May. And there's a lot of different benefits to this calendar. The first benefit that students typically like the most is after every testing session, students have at minimum one week of a vacation to kind of give their brains a rest. So that means after midterms, they have um, after midterms they have a week off of class, and then after uh, finals they have a week off, and then that kind of switches over in the winter term a um, little bit differently. So after the first set of midterms, which happens about the end of February, they have their winter break, which is not spring break, so it happens like the first week of March. Then they actually complete their their uh, winter term. And their spring break is the last week of uh, April, which 
Oddly enough is very refreshing because you actually have spring weather when you're on spring break and the beaches aren't so crowded when you decide to go down to Florida or what be it. And then in the last term, that May term, students can do a variety of different things. They can study abroad during their one month. A lot of students like to take the opportunity, especially if they have a rigorous program, they can't really do it during the semester. Um, students, if they had a very difficult semester previously, they will you know, take a lighter load for that one term. And then also students who maybe they have one class they really wanna dedicate their time and energy into, they use that one month to really focus on that class. Speaking about some of our classes, we do have 34 majors, including a design your own. So if you have a particular interest or study that you would like to participate in um, and you don't see it on our list, you can certainly get with our registrar and a couple of our different departments and try to make that here at Hanover. Some of our top programs include education. Education, the unique aspect of this is students are student teaching within their first year. And 100% of our students that go through our education program are actually placed within um, the classroom within seven months after Hanover. So we have a very successful, um, fully accredited uh, education program. Our communication major is actually the most popular on campus and it is exceptionally paired with majority of other majors. So a lot of students that decide to double major will use the communications as another secondary major to improve their um, marketability. Our natural sciences major is um, any one of you know biology, chemistry, geology, environmental science, any of these science courses are very popular not just because of the, the, the idea of science is being coming more and more popular, but Hanover's unique location is essentially the dream of a natural scientist. Um, this year included, of the students that applied to grad school, 100% um, of them not only got into their top two choices, but they also got in with funding. So our natural scientists, because of our unique lab opportunities, our space that we have, um, and our one-on-one -on -one academic advising with professionals in that field, have connections to the graduate level. So students looking to get um, doctorates or master's degrees are successfully doing so. Our engineering is um, a very quickly growing program. We have state-of-the-art labs and we pair with local businesses to form partnerships starting your first year. It's an experience that students have to develop finer skills that put them kind of a cut above students that don't have um, the liberal arts background of an engineering degree. And then our last two programs, the health sciences program um, is really popular um, amongst our students. Like I mentioned, pre-med is the very common major on campus, um, but this is really for anybody interested in the health and science field. It's not an actual major, it's an additional curriculum program. So anybody interested in veterinarian work, dentistry, pharmacy, medicine, nursing even, Basically, we pair you up with an advisor and they work closely with you to create a unique internship and externship experience that you can use for credit if you wish, um, but also leads to a lot of jobs and summer research projects. And then lastly, our business scholars program. This is the program that houses our business ma major and minor. And um, the most commonly noted, I guess, part of this program is that the summer between your junior and senior year, you can have a paid project-based internship. Basically, that means that you're going to get paid to do something that you're studying to do, and you're not going to be running and getting coffee as an intern. You are actually on the floor working in the development room. If it's a marketing, you're doing marketing platforms. If you're a business strategist, you're looking at you know, business management strategies and creating your own plan and activating that within a business. We partner with a lot of different businesses for this, and this goes directly through the Business Scholars Program, so it's not taking away from what our career center is doing with other students. I mentioned earlier, about 95% of our graduates take part in one of these experiential learning opportunities, whether that's a lab, or that's study abroad, or that's working on the internship aspect. I've mentioned study abroad quite a bit, so I will touch on that. Every student on campus does have the opportunity to study abroad for free. Um, they just have to pay for your plane tickets. We have 13 different English speaking programs for the semester long to, um, study abroad. And then we have about five uh, language specific. So if you wanted to work on a particular language, you can actually go to the country where that's spoken natively and improve your um, efforts there. 
And that's your traditional study abroad. Um, the most popular one for that is our Australia and our Spain programs. Both one, Australia is the English speaking, Spain obviously is a Spanish speaking um, curriculum. And then we also have that May term where you take one class for the one month of May. I mentioned a lot of students take that as an opportunity to get out and study abroad. Basically, May term is fair game as far as where and, and what you'll be doing. There are students um, who anticipate a certain class every other year or every year. So we do have some annual and biannual uh, courses that go to the same location and have the same sort of um, content. But we also have students that maybe approach a professor and say, hey, we'd really be interested in going here and learning this. Can you put a class together? The benefit of that small school style is that that happens more often than it doesn't. So um, this is more of an extended field trip, though. You basically are a Hanover class going with a Hanover professor to that location to learn about it. And our study abroad in May term is domestic or out of the country. So we have, uh, for example, a biology group that goes to the Grand Canyon um, and studies the rock formations. Hanover College is a Division Three athletic conference school. Uh, we are part of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. So um, in the last five years, we've seen 37 different conference championships across all 23 of our different men and women varsity sports. We've also appeared in 15 NCAA Division III national tournaments, and we've hosted quite a few in the past years as well. And then the stat that we're most proud about is in the past two years, we have been awarded the Commissioner's Cup. So what that means is we have the most wins for the most amount of teams on campus overall in the entire conference. So we're very excited about that. Um, our student athletes are some of the strongest leaders on campus. We do have that 50% student athlete and it's, uh, they're some of the strongest leaders, but they also have some of the strongest academic groups because of the push for it being a student athlete participatory board. So as a small campus, we do have um, pretty active resident and student life. Students do live on campus. We have over 70 clubs and organizations. They vary from service-based organizations to academics, honors clubs. We have an improv comedy group, um, which always brings a good laugh about. And then we have Greek life as well, um, intramural sports, club sports. Our, basically our slogan is we're small, but you can do it all. Um, if you, for some reason, are looking for a very particular hobby and we don't have a club, we really welcome you to start one here. And um, we're always open to starting new things. This year, in fact, one of our first year students, she's a very avid beekeeper, wanted to maintain that hobby when she came to college. And now we have our very first beekeeping club that started this year. So very excited to bring new things into our campus life. Some of the things that you might have heard Hanover's name behind is our nationally uh, recognized bingo competitions. I know it sounds silly, but one of the biggest traditions on campus is our monthly bingo. When we went virtual this spring, albeit we were a little upset that we weren't going to have our big spring kickoff bingo session, but we were able to move it to virtual and we actually had over 250 students join us for a virtual bingo session. Sometimes we have surprise visitors come out to call for us. Um, maybe you'll see the campus president or if we have um, a famous speaker that was on campus earlier that week, they make it um, a surprise visit to be our bingo caller. One of the other important traditions on campus is our spring term wiffle ball tournament. This is something that runs the entire month of May. It's put on by one of the fraternities as a philanthropy event. We have over 90 teams that join. Some of the teams are made up of faculty and staff. Um, sometimes you'll do uh, student groups and clubs and organizations. It's all good and fun, and we play throughout the entire night, so from 5 p.m. to 5 uh, a.m. Seems a little late, but when you just have one class to worry about, it's every once in a while it's good to stay up for a good cause. And then lastly, I mentioned our students like to uh, use our green space. We do have over a dozen waterfalls and miles of hiking trails that kind of go through in and out of the, the valley near the river, so um, students are encouraged to take part in some of the hiking, even some of our classes are hosted outside. For me, the most important thing about college is what are you going to eat and where are you going to live? So we're very excited to be partnered with Parkhurst Dining. They are so true to the fresh farm to table dining. Every day something is new. We have three main dining areas. 
Um, the one that you see pictured here is actually our main campus center dining hall. And within it, you have about seven different stations that have a variety of different food items. Um, so for example, we have a station for the deli, which is similar to a Subway. We have our home style cooking, which is like a golden corral. So your steak and potatoes kind of deal. We have um, a made to order wok. So oriental foods, however you want, you decide what you want in it and they do a stir fry for you. We have our brick oven, uh, pizza and pasta, which is similar to an olive garden. We do have a classic grill, so you get your hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken sandwiches, things like that. And then one of my favorites was the Mexican style, um, kind of create your own bowl, which is similar to that of Cordoba. Um, that's all within one. This is an all you can eat buffet style dining hall. So definitely easy to kind of get lost in some of the food opportunities. Um, but one of the things that Chef Andrew does a really good job of is asking students, what are they missing? What kind of foods do you want to see? Um, sometimes he sits down with students and says, hey, this is what we're thinking about getting. Um, would you like to make the menu with me? So sometimes you get a little bit of saying what you have. Um, we actually work with Chef Andrew quite a bit with our students who have allergies or issues uh, with dietary restrictions. We had a student who had severe allergies, could not even enter the main food line. They would text Chef Andrew and he would literally ask him what they wanted, make it for them and deliver it to them right outside of the main building every single time. So he's very involved in our student uh, food choices. The other important aspect of this is where are you going to stay on campus? We are very excited to announce the renovations of our first year housing, which has been kind of ongoing throughout the summer. Um, they got a complete renovation on the interior. Uh, and I'm quite frankly a little jealous because now our freshman halls have AC. So no more of that summer heat coming off the river. Um, we do have the traditional dorm style, two people to a room uh, for our first year housing. And then afterwards, our upperclassmen can choose from apartment style suites. They can maintain the traditional dorm. We have pods, which can house up to seven people. Theme houses can have up to 15 people and they're responsible for putting on events throughout the year. Greek houses as well. And then we also uh, added two townhouses onto campus this summer as well. So students who want more of that independent living style, they can do that. Um, we really maintain the exterior type of our um, building, our architecture, as you can tell by that, that lower picture on the, on the right. Um, it has the original Gregorian architecture, which is basically why um, so many years we've been on the Princeton Review for one of the top 20 most beautiful campuses. All of our architecture has been maintained with the original bricks and pillars. A little bit more of the emission side of things. Again, just a reminder, if you have questions, I'm kind of going through this fast. Feel free to type it into the chat or into the Q&A. We are in the emission cycle right now and we have tried to make it as easy as possible for you. Um, all we need is an application. You can apply through our website, Hanover.edu, or through the Common app, and a, a transcript. That is the essentials that we need from you. We have been test optional for four years. This is our fourth year being test optional, so we're not new to that. Um, as your admission counselor, my biggest advice is I would much rather see you focusing on making sure you're adjusting to whatever your school plans are this semester and really getting the most out of your academics and not worry about the test score since we don't need them. If you do want to submit a test score, we use them to verify our scholarship opportunities, our merit-based scholarship, which I'll talk about in just a moment. It's free to apply. We have a couple of different deadlines. The one that's coming up is November 1st, which is our early decision and early action deadline. Um, either one of those are really good options if you kind of are looking at Hanover and you think, okay, I wanna know as soon as possible if I'm in or not. So um, send me your application and I will get it read as soon as I can. So the big question on everybody's mind, aside from test scores this year, is the financial aid and scholarship opportunities. We start off our scholarships with our merit scholarship, which is based on your academics. They range from 15,000 to 25,000 every year for four years. I know on this image it uses the ACT and the SAT, but that is just a check um, system for us, for students that do submit a test score. We evaluate all students without a test score first, and then we put them into um, a curriculum score and place their scholarship 
And then if they gave us a test score, we just use it to double check. If there's a difference between the two, we give you the higher of the two. Um, so if you do have a test score and you kind of want to see, you know, eyeball where you could be at, then you can use this. We have a couple of competitive scholarships. Um, the first one to note is our Pro Scholarship. This ranges from 25,000 to 5,000. It, it is an essay-based scholarship, and it is for our students who are academically um, inclined and also show le leadership opportunities. Um, basically, if you have good grades and you participate well, you could apply for the Crow Scholarship. It's an essay-based competition, so um, if you have already written an essay and you just knocked it out of the park, go ahead and submit that one. You don't need to make something extra, but if you want to, we do have a few prompts you can follow. The other comp competitive scholarship we have is the Benjamin Templeton Scholarship. Um, this is a highly competitive scholarship. It is full tuition, and it is for students who are interested and in demonstrate a passion for social justice and equality issues. That doesn't mean you have to be actively doing a project for these groups, but it does, um, it is an invite only sort of competition. So you'll write an essay describing your passion and then based on that, uh, you would receive an invitation to compete. If you do play a musical instrument or you participate in a choir program, uh, we do have a music scholarship competition. It is based on audition, but it is an additional, sorry, an additional $1,500 every year. Um, one thing I want to point out to students and parents is that we have the Campus Experience Award. Um, this is for any student who visits us either virtually or in person on a one-on-one -on -one session. We are open to students, so if you want to come out for a day and visit campus and enjoy the fall weather, we would more than welcome you. But for students who file FAFSA by April 1st and come to see us, again, virtually or in person, we'll get an additional $1,000 every year for four years. I like to say that we cover your gas and then some. A few additional scholarships that I wanted to point out. Um, the one I mentioned earlier for Ohio students is the Buckeye Award. We recognize that because you're coming from Ohio, you might be missing out on some state aid by leaving the state. So we have an additional scholarship that goes to any of our Ohio students that file FAFSA. Um, one of the most important things to remember about financial aid and scholarships is just to talk to your counselor, which is me. So I will make sure I pop my contact information back up on the screen at the end. But your guidance counselor is also a great resource. Ask them for any community foundation scholarships or anything that might be particular to what you're studying. I know nursing and medicine and engineering and even education all have very good um, scholarships outside of colleges as an individual. So I always encourage students to do a little bit of research and see what they can pick up. Every little bit counts. Speaking of every little bit, Hanover realizes that every little bit that we put into our students counts towards their success. So in a national data uh, survey that was collected through the Department of Education, Hanover College was one of the top 25% of schools nationwide that spent the most on services that are specifically designed to support the students' emotional and physical well-being, as well as their social, cultural, and intellectual development outside of the classroom. So not only is Hanover using their um, influences inside of the classroom with their professors and everything, we also are using our resources to help students outside of the classroom. For me, one of the most um, important aspects is getting additional study aid for students that need um, help studying or with this particular content. We have a free tutor center that is peer led and there is a specific tutor for not only every single class that's taught on campus, but also if there are double sections by two different professors. So like if you have two chemistry courses and there are two professors, there's a student who knows what that specific professor wants. So we have students who are selected by the professors to tutor in that class and that ultimately leads to our student success. We also have a 24 seven um, counselor. Well, we have three 24 seven counselors that are available to students whenever they need it, as well as two additional um, health services. One is a telehealth service for students that just wanna call in and see what kind of quick fixes they can get for maybe a strained muscle from walking on the trails or a small cold, see if they need to come into the actual health services, which acts as a um, free clinic to students. 
Some of the things that Hanover is most noted for is that 99% of our students that graduate um, within seven months have either a full employment or are continuing their education. By a full employment, we mean students that are not only using, uh, not only working in their field using their degree, but some of their um, employment actually requires a higher degree um, and then they are able to acquire that through that business. We do have internship opportunities for all students, regardless of major or study. So I know I talked about the business program and having that opportunity for students, um, but every single major has some sort of an internship opportunity if you want it. 94% of our professors have terminal degrees. I've mentioned that a few times. This means that 94% of our professors have the highest degree in their field and they are actively engaged in that field's research and development. Um, our biggest claim to fame, you could say, that really demonstrates this is our biology professor is responsible for writing an entire chapter in the National Intro to Biology textbook that colleges use across the, the nation. And then lastly, every single student has an academic advisor that's within their major. Um, I even mentioned that earlier we have certain majors that have the ability and have the faculty to have uh, a, a faculty advisor that not only is within their major, but within their specific concentration. So again, that, you know, not only do you have a psychology professor who's your psychology major advisor, but if you're interested in neuropsychology, they have a neuropsychology degree as well. One of the last things we offer is our four-year guarantee. So students might have heard um, colleges taking a little bit longer to finish. Um, we actually are so confident that our students will graduate in four years that if for some reason you do not, we will, have, we will cover your tuition for the remaining semester or year. This speaks to our level of mentorship, counseling, and liberal arts initiative. We really don't anticipate students will need this guarantee because they are given so much exposure and support to successfully complete in four years, but just in case they need that little bit of help, we do have the four-year guarantee. So I don't know if you have anything in the Q&A, I will look it up, but if you have any questions, here's my contact information. Um, some of you might be typing in the Q&A. Okay, we do have a question in the Q&A. For the education major, is the teaching certificate allowed in Ohio as well? Actually, yes. So Ohio is one of those states that sometimes can be a little bit complicated to get a teaching degree outside of it. Um, we actually this week met with our education department. Dr. Um, Dr. Bailey is the director and he specifically spoke to this. So oftentimes what they do for the, um, the specific courses that you have to take for Ohio education to pass your testing and get your licensure, um, rather than having you take uh, just generalized elective courses within the education major, you, um, you basically do a directed study that is one of those requirements. So you don't have to do extra schooling after you leave Hanover. You can, you're ready to apply for your licensure within Ohio. Um, typically what they do is you, can, you decide your major, your sophomore year, um, second semester sophomore year. Same thing with education. You don't have to declare early or anything like that but they will ask you if you know that you're going to be teaching in another state other than Indiana. That way they can prepare you for this. Ohio, for example, is a really good one that we, um, that we encourage students. If you're going to be teaching in Ohio, you're looking to be licensed in Ohio, we want to know early on so we can set you up so you don't have to do any additional schoolwork. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions from anybody in the group? Oh, I just got a response. You're very welcome. Well, again, I encourage you to reach out, check out our um, website, Hanover.edu. We have connections on our, for example, if you're interested in education, check out our education page. I recommend you speak directly with Dr. Bailey. He is a phenomenal character. He's really open to having phone conversations or setting up some chats with you. 
Um, and just let me know if you need anything or have any additional questions. Uh, thank you. I'll kind of hand it back over to you. Thank you so much, Wilda. Thank you for joining us this evening. When you close your window and end from the screen, there will be a quick survey. It's just a four question survey that we ask that you complete for us. Again, if you're interested in signing up for more sessions, it's oacac.org. And the, this recording will be available about a week after the program. Same website, oacac.org. So thank you so much. Um, thanks for coming. Have a great year um, and we'll talk to you soon.